feels like I've not seen you lot for ages. Well, it's only been a week. It's only been a week. It's only been a week. I've really missed you. I know, I have. I've really I've missed, missed you. Too. We're uh, back. But we are right at the business end of the season. It is match week 36. And it kicks off tonight at Luton against Everton. Uh, both of the title chasers are playing tomorrow. Arsenal, uh, the midday kickoff against Bournemouth and the late kickoff in the Premier League. Manchester City host Wolves. There are three games on Sunday. Uh, a glamorous game between Liverpool and Tottenham and a London derby between Chelsea and West Ham. And then on Monday night, Crystal Palace host Manchester United. Yes. Some huge, huge games to look forward to in match week 36. Io, what have we got coming up? Yes, yes, guys, it's not every day I'm in a photo lab for the show. Stick around to find out exactly why I am here. And also, as you know, the title race is hotting up later on. I'll be putting Bukaya Saka under pressure. Do you ever look in the mirror and flex your muscles? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I love that. Now, Saka's Arsenal, as well as Manchester City, have been hitting the target on the pitch. But could Nathan Ake and Rico Lewis do the same off of it? Seems a bit I'm nervous. He, he's no, he's coming across as You're just going to school, yeah. so it's still fresh in your head, you know? Yeah, but I didn't take geography. Oh, yeah, okay. Talking of hitting the target, Conor Gallagher did so in spectacular fashion last weekend against Villa and was in fine form last night too. But could he carry that into our tumbling tower, all while answering some slightly awkward questions? Who's got the worst haircut in the squad? Oh, good question. You? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> That's bang out. <laughs> I mean, I was saying that he's in a photo lab. He looks like he's in his local dry cleaners. <laughs> it quite I don't know like why he looks like a dry cleaners. <laughs> Maybe know. I've got dry cleaning that needs to be done. <laughs> uh, OK, it's so tight at the top. It happens this weekend. Arsenal against uh, Bournemouth. Manchester City against Wolves. It must be very nervous times <laughs> for a certain IO out there. Where are you, bruv? <laughs> Yeah, man, definitely. I'll, I'll be revealing where I am a, a little later on. I think I said it at the top of the show, but look, yeah, another uh, Basque manager coming to Arsenal. The last one was obviously Unai Emery, uh, and Aston Villa did the job against Arsenal. So there's a few Arsenal fans that are feeling a little scared about, you know, Bournemouth coming to Arsenal this weekend. But we never know, you know, Arsenal are still firing on all cylinders, as, as we know. And you look... The big North London derby was a real telling point, wasn't it? Um, Arsenal started that game so well. Um, own goal to kick things off, but then Saka, and dare I say it, Liv, Havertz, comes up again and, and does the job. The only worrying issue for me with that game was the silly mistakes. Uh, David Raya obviously causing uh, the equaliser for, for Tottenham Hotspur, and then Arsenal was sort of pegged back all the way uh, through the second second half of that game, especially the latter parts of the second half of that game. But I think, you know, there's a lot of Arsenal fans here that are just glad that the momentum carries on. They're just glad that the team is still firing and actually that our star men are actually firing beautifully as well. Yeah, do you know what? I'm scared about this Bournemouth game for Arsenal. I'm really, really scared. Do you not think... <laughs> really, really scared, Obviously, honestly, like... I mean... Yeah, you, you mentioned the Raya mistake there. That was completely unnecessary. And it was a nervy finish. But you've got a nice home fixture now against Bournemouth. Do you think the fact that they haven't now got much to play for plays into Arsenal's hands a little bit? It's been a brilliant season. We know how good they are. That win was big mm. for Arsenal. But the fact that they haven't got much to play for, do you think, do you think that actually suits Arsenal? Sadly. Do you reckon? I don't know, man. I, I think what, what team turns up and goes, we don't want to win, right? Yeah, like, this is the Premier that. League. You've got some of the best teams in the world playing. And, and a lot of these teams have great players. Look at what Solanke is doing this season. He'll want to turn up and, and, and get the job done. I think it's very hard to say no team wants to win a game, you know? Like, they're going to come and try and give their best. They also want to finish their season on a high. They want to give their fans something to sing about and shout about and say, we did Arsenal, who are the league leaders at this moment in time. So... I, I wouldn't say that necessarily. I just think 
this is the kind of game that a team like Arsenal could slip up on. And I think if we're ever talking about mentality and what might have changed from last season, you have to go into these kind of games with the same sort of mindset that, you know, means that you want to win the Premier League. And I think Arsenal can't worry about what's happening at Manchester City at this moment in time. They've just basically got to focus on getting the job done. How they start this game and also the players that they start for this game could be really interesting because one of the biggest criticisms this season has been that Mikel Arteta hasn't trusted his bench, right? So do we see Emil Smith-Rowe, for instance, coming into the squad? Do we see Martinelli get a bit more game time as well? Um, do we see a bit more rotation in there? Or does he go with the squad that he had a, a, a against Tottenham, which were very, very strong? But I think, for me, as an Arsenal fan in particular, and when you look at that bench right now, you're thinking, actually, we've still got some decent game beaters there. So let's just see who he picks. I think when, when Arsenal fans were looking at the fixtures, meant, they were looking at perhaps that Man City-Tottenham game that was going to be the one that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that City slip up on. But having watched Ars uh, Spurs against Arsenal and Chelsea, probably they're not. not. They're not, man. <laughs> I think the game for City to slip up is Fulham away. Yeah. Really? I think that's yes. the, the yes, tricky men's, game. Men's. I, I think, think the Tottenham game, they'll, they'll, mm. they'll get rid of him. But Do I think what? this Fulham away game... Mm. I mean, the thing tricky. for me is... Uh, uh, listen, not to, to make it about Liverpool, but what we've seen down the stretch is... <laughs> Anyone could go anywhere and win. We, yeah. No one expected Crystal mm. Palace to go to Anfield and win. Everyone expected Liverpool to go to Everton and win quite easily. Mm. Liverpool lost both of those games. Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason why, you know, Arsenal and Manchester City, even though it's unlikely, could drop points this week or, like you just said... And am I, am I mistaken, last season, this, uh, the Bournemouth game is when... Reece Davis was going to last minute winner. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Is, is it? Yeah. No, 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 Bukayo Saka, welcome to your Premier League lie detector test. We've actually um, we've hired in the best in the business, Ross. He's, uh, he's worked with the CIA, he's worked with the LAPD. These guys put some serious guys away. I'm not even lying to you. I know you're finding it funny. I can see your readings now. This is really interesting to start things off. We've already had Aaron Ramsdale. So now it's your turn. Are you ready? I'm ready, yes. First question. Do you have the best drip in the squad? No. Have you ever practised a goal celebration in front of the mirror? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking. Of course I have. I have. Mr. CIA. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, this is interesting. The worst golfer in the squad? No. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? You want to reveal? It says no. It says no. So you are a good golfer? I'm not a good golfer. No, I'm not. Okay. Interesting. Is there anyone more intelligent than you in the squad? No. You are the most intelligent yes. at Arsenal? Yes. Why are you shaking <laughs> your head? Tell us man. the truth, come on. Yes. It says you're lying. Who's more intelligent than you? You have to be honest, yeah, man. Maybe, there, maybe there's two or three. Go on, then. Leo Trossard, mm -hmm. he's really smart. Jorginho as well. He's on PhD level. That guy's intelligent. Yeah, Jorginho is very intelligent. Be real. I feel like I'm missing someone. We'll catch you out if you're lying, bro. Nah, I think I'll put only those two above me. OK. Yeah. Do you ever Google yourself? Yes. Fair. Do you think you have the best trim in the squad? Yes. Wow. Backing yourself on that one. Respect. <clears throat> Do 
Do you ever look in the mirror and flex your muscles? No. Tell me what I need to hear, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were scared of that, bro. I was scared, I was scared. You were scared. Fast that one, fast it. Final one. Do you rate yourself as a footballer? Yes. Man, that's amazing. Yeah, smart. He did it. How would you gauge that against a, a lot of the, the baddies you put away, Ross? <laughs> he doesn't speak much, does he? <laughs> Say something to us, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy that's sure of himself, Bukaya Saka. Thank you for taking the Premier League. Thank you very much, guys. Nice set to test. Yeah, I love that. Kaya Saka was crumbling under the pressure, though. <laughs> I can't even lie. Ah, you're a good detective, though, bro. I can't even lie, bro. Very good detective. Yo, it's, it... It's my little side hustle, man. I've taken down Aaron Ramsdale, I've taken down Saka. Who's next, man? Bring him on, I've got to say. But I wonder if, if I asked you guys those questions, uh, have you ever flexed your muscles in front of the mirror? What would you say, Mintz? Come on. <laughs> now, bro. I'm not, I'm not sure I've ever flexed my muscles in front of the mirror, to be I've honest. I've got to say, I do, it, I, I do it every morning before I've had my breakfast, because that's when you look trim. Yeah, 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 yeah. You look the best in the morning. You know that, you JJ, you know that. Morning, you look the best. Uh, right, it's time for World in a Week. Yes. And we're going to stick with the Arsenal theme, because someone mm. decided to get married on the day of the North London How Derby. How inconsiderate is that bride? Well, <laughs> I suppose you didn't know, but keep an eye, I think, on the dad of the, of the groom, because he had something to say. Let's have a look. They're walking out. It's a nice slow mo no, no, shot. No. Look at the dad. Three. Oh, it's I love three. That. I love that. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> that is brilliant. He's just let his son know. He's just made that day even more special for that. Yeah. That green will probably remember the day for that, won't he? Yeah, Scoring it's, three it's a great against, day. against it's a great first. Day. Io, how would you feel about yeah, getting yeah. married on a day of a North London derby that means so much? I mean, look, that, that, that was bad admin, man, real talk, you know, because for me, I'd, I'd have my phone under the table. I know it might be the biggest day of my life, but North London Derby is a massive day, man. I just get a quick look at the scores and I'm ready for the <laughs> ceremony. But, yeah, I mean, look, you've got to do what you've got to do, right? But that, that, that is, there's too much nerves on both sides for me. <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to focus on one thing. I'm done. Absolutely. Uh, I think there's a solution here. Just get married out of the football season. Then yeah, you don't need to do thing. it. Exactly. You never know when a fixture's exactly, going to be. Bro. Exactly. Exactly. Io, thank you so much. We'll be back to you a little thank bit later much. on in the show. Um, now, our next thing for World in a Week, we've all been talking about, Jay, is um, it's a pretty special Woo! Hole, hole in one, didn't you? I did. You I did. did. Can did. we let's have a look? So, yeah, this is um, this is me on Turnbury, um, on the coast of Scotland, east coast of Scotland. It's one of the finest golf courses in the world. Actually, it's been rated numerous times as number one. And look at all of these messages. Look at the, look at the blue ticks. Premier League players. Look at all the blue ticks. Yeah, John, John Terry, Steve Sidwell, both Chelsea players, Jody Morris, Jimmy Bullard, uh, Mark Bright, who I used to host a show, show with on here, Alan Shearer, Alan Premier League. Alan Shearer. And, Alan yeah, Shearer. And, and Carlton Morris. Uh, we played some golf with Carlton Morris yeah. earlier this season. So, of course. Yeah, it was... Uh, you know, it's something that I've been playing for about 20 years, and uh, you know, there you go, there you go. Just, Here we are. What? Just, just picking up. How'd you get up, all in one? You just, Jay, you, that you just dropped. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> hit it. Sorry. You stand there, you pick the right club, you hit it in the right direction, and you hope it goes in the hole, and ace. That's Thank crazy you. to that's, me. No, that's crazy. But is that one of like the hardest things in sport to do? But yes. also, when, when you show me the video, the wind. Yeah. The wind blowing the ball everywhere. I'm not... So this is this. So this is after, after I've hit the shot now, and I'm running onto the green just to see if it's in the hole because from where I was I couldn't see that Didn't far. Didn't pull your hamstring still. And it wasn't in the hole. <laughs> Sorry. But I don't fight for jokes. Ah, oh, look in the at hole. you. Now, That's crazy. Look, you must have been. You must have been elated. Delighted. Yeah. Where does that rank? Rank? You've, you know, you've achieved so much in your career, Spoonie. But where does that hole in one rank? Must be quite high. Yeah, it's, it's up there. Yeah, it's up there. Okay. It's maybe something that I. Because you've been playing for like twenty years. It's maybe something that I'll never do again. Yeah. And I'll be happy to never do it again because I've done it once. So yeah. 
Fantastic. Yeah, unreal. Well done. No, very, very impressive. To all the golfers around very, the world. Very, very impressive. Now, guys, you know that show that uh, is on our YouTube called uh, Five Second Rule? Yep. You How can it? we not? Know that? Yeah, okay, cool. So Levi Cole did it this week, but look at this clip here, because we've got a challenge to do. Okay. Oh, no. Wait, it's coming down. It might, fl it might flip over. Very Come on, that is so close. We're going to have to shot film up there. This is actually pretty good going, this. I reckon give it another smile. Oh, so That's close. Tough. You're so close. How are you? Oh, no, it's going up. No. <laughs> the oh, God. Uh. You're so close. Oh! No! All that. He's falling at the last handle. That's horrible, that. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got chocolate all over his face. Oh, no. <laughs> By the way, I love how Brilliant. Liv just passing around that Maradona chopper everywhere. Everyone, everyone, yeah. Everyone really loves good. it. OK, so we're going we're gonna to try it, guys. Oh, gosh, OK. We've got to start with the after eight on the forehead. Mm -hmm. JJ, you know what your forehead is? I know you don't... It's a wow. one. So I know it's this one thing. <laughs> wow. You know where the forehead starts, isn't it? All right, okay. so three, two, one, go. Oh, I'd, my God. Oh, oh! Oh! How's mine on my cheek already? I don't know how My to... eyelash is going to come off. How did you... How Getting it down I don't like know. That. Mine just fell down. How'd you look? I... Oh, no! <laughs> that was so close! <laughs> Mince is just... Ah. Uh, OK, uh, I, I might, I'm actually so annoyed that it was so close. Go on, Mince. Uh, That's so close. He's okay. going to drop. He's going to oh! drop. <laughs> 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 go on, go on. you got to hold it. Oh, no! I mean, I'm really disappointed that none of us did it, but I'm going to eat mine now. I there's really loads. Like, I don't like gonna, fighting my food, gonna, do you know what I mean? We're <laughs> going to still try in the break until we can do it, and there's loads more still to come on Welcome to the Weekend. It's cold in here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always very intrigued to see if this gets anything that's remotely usable, but if it does, it's a cool story. Welcome back to the show. Look, it's a massive, massive weekend of football as the title race hots up again, but also some European places still to go. You know, match week 36 kicks off with Luton as they take on Everton. And also, look, it's the title race Saturday with Arsenal and Manchester City playing home fixtures, but it's also survival Saturday with Burnley hosting Newcastle and Forest playing at relegated Sheffield United. Uh, there's matches you do not want to miss on Sunday as Aston Villa, look, Villa are sort of pushing for that battle for fourth before Crystal Palace closed the weekend at home to Manchester United. And it is that game that this guy over here, over my shoulder, will be chatting to me in just a second, Miles, is really interested in. And here is why. Hello, I'm Miles. I am a photographer who specialises in shooting sports on old school 35mm film cameras. You may know me online as Expired Film Club, and I'm delighted today to be here at the Theatre of Dreams to shoot Manchester United versus Burnley in the Premier League. I'm about to go in and take my position pitch side now, so let's go. We're now pitch side at Old Trafford. I'm sat just in front of the stretch again. This is my position for the game. Uh, very excited for the match to start. And uh, we're about two hours before kickoff now, which is typically where I like to get in position and get my cameras set and ready to go. This is a 1940s uh, folding Zeiss Nikon, which pops out like that, which I love every time I do it. <laughs> and I thought it might be kind of cool to capture some stuff on this during the game in black and white, just to have a bit of juxtaposition, you know, the modern day game on a camera that's uh, older than a lot of clubs in the world these days. It's a little bit before kickoff now, so I'm just gonna fire off a couple of test shots uh, before the players come in, get some food before the game starts, the most important bit, and then we're ready to go. I guess here comes the teams. <laughs> got underway, Burnley kick us off. So one of the things about using film cameras and having prime lenses on is that you can't zoom in or out, especially with the 300mm. So there'll be a lot of times where I've got to switch between cameras as the action comes closer to me. And here's Bruno Fernandes shooting position. He digs in far post. Oh, and it's just touched over the crossbar. 
I was a photographer and filmmaker in the music industry for a long time. Uh, and I was particularly interested in old roles of expired film, because film has a sort of best by date after its time. The film can go really weird, colours can change, it can go really grainy and stuff, and I found it really interesting. And there was one game in particular, we went to watch Fulham vs Wolves, and I did one of my videos from the stands where I loaded a roll of film, showed the results at the end of it, and the club saw it and really enjoyed it. After a few months, they messaged and officially invited me to be a, a pitch side photographer. It luckily went really viral on social, it had about 15 million views. And from that, I just started to get invited by other clubs to come and shoot games for them. So the last time I was at Old Trafford was for the Liverpool FA Cup game that finished 4-3. And it was honestly one of the highlights of my life. It's Garnacho. He's got Ahmed at rhythm. He's played it left. It's Ahmed Jello. Can he finish it? We've got to try and keep an eye out for when he actually takes the free kick. Here it comes. Deep. Wamasaka clears it. Play back in. What a save by Nana. Brilliant goalkeeping. One of the fullbacks of using film during a game like this is it's quite easy to miss action. It's called a rangefinder camera. So you can't actually see where you're focusing through the viewfinder. All you've got to tell where you're focusing is this little dial which tells how far away in feet you're focusing on. Celebrating right here, so that was perfect. <laughs> this is from 1897, uh, which makes it 127 years old. And I like to take it to games sometimes to see if it can capture the modern game on technology that's over 100 years old. I'm always very intrigued to see if this gets anything that's remotely usable. But if it does, it's a cool story. It's a penalty. It's Amori. He slid into the bottom corner on Burnley level. Trying to get the celebrations as he's pointing to the Burnley fans. There it is, full time. 1-1 one, one the final score. Harry Maguire looks a bit desolate. I'm just showing some photos of him and Ahmad. The United players look disappointed, and so I think that'll come across in the photos. Well, there it is, 1-1 one, one final score. Really good second half, actually, and a lot of the action happened right in front of me uh, here on the touchline. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this little behind-the-scenes look at how I shoot a football game on 35mm film. Thanks so much for joining me, and see you soon. Yes, yes, yes. Look, Miles, you've got that film right there. there. Please give it to the gentleman to get this bad I boy processed. I can't are, wait to see how this comes out at the end of the show. Right, stand here because we, yeah. we've, we've got to talk about what I've just seen there. Firstly, yeah. good skills as a <laughs> presenter. You. I'm liking that. <laughs> really, really that. good. Yeah. But also, secondly, you know, you're a Man United fan, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. how hard is it to separate your love for your team when you have to photograph them? Yeah, it can be difficult. I mean, I know in that VT, um, you showed a, a little clip of me when I was shooting the Liverpool FA Cup game, yeah. which, as a fan, I mean, I was sat there in, right in front of the Stretford end, and as Ahmad scored that last-minute winner, it happened right in front of me. And so I just, I, I didn't, I didn't even like, I, my, my body just took over. I didn't even mean to go as mad as I did. It was just one of those moments where like, I couldn't help myself. And so there are times, obviously I had to make sure as I was celebrating, I was like, oh wait, I've got to make sure I get the photos. Um, so it can be difficult sometimes. Um, but I think in a way being a fan, it gives me a perspective as to what I might like to see from the photos myself. If I was looking online and seeing photos of a United game shot on film, I kind of think, that's you know the attitude of maybe a fan coming in and so i think in in some ways it can be a benefit and obviously being at Old Trafford to shoot a game is just a dream come true. But one of the things, I don't know if you've noticed it till you watch yourself back, is yeah. that you kind of commentate as you're <laughs> yeah, taking the picture. Does that allow you to see the story in your head and maybe <laughs> get how it might potentially unfold? Maybe, yeah. I mean, it's something that I've just always naturally done. <laughs> it must drive people mad when they watch football <laughs> with me at home because I do commentate as the game's going on. But I think, yeah, in a way, it kind of does sort of help me to, to think about what's happening in the game, maybe where the ball's going to go next. And that's the thing, obviously, with sports photography is you've got to be very reactive to where things are happening. So I think talking through what's happening as I'm seeing it, makes me think, oh, maybe if Gaianacho is running this way and he's going to cut inside and shoot, I can predict where the ball's going to go or what he's going to do with it. And so I suppose, in a way, having that like internal, external monologue does help in a funny way for me to decide when to fire the shutter and you know where to frame it up and stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, the, the last thing I'm really going to talk to you about is, is analog photography. You know, yeah. the, the old school photography coming back. Look, 
we're very different ages and I remember the old <laughs> school photographs. My dad used to have one of the old film cameras. And oh, I, I remember them too. Today. Yeah, I know yeah. you do, but like, <laughs> what do you think that resurgence is all about, especially yeah. around football as well? Yeah, it's interesting. I think in, in general now, you know, it's, we're such a digital society and I think with film photography, we were talking earlier and likened it to vinyl in, in mm. the music world. And I think people do really appreciate, you know, in the age of, you know, you go on holiday and you take your phone out and you snap 200 photos and you kind of look at them once and post them and then never see them again. I think people really enjoy that kind of tangible thing of like you physically get the roll of film and you physically put it into the camera and you move the film across and you wind it on. And because there are only so many photos on a roll, it makes you much more intentional about yeah. what you take a photo of. And I, I think personally, um, it makes you a better photographer in that way because it, it means you have to decide on the moments. And then when you when then you know you get the scans back from the lab, like the one that we're in today, Analog Wonderland, um, it's just it's really great. It makes you remember those moments yeah. even more. Uh, and obviously there's the added bonus of it just straight away looks vintage and cool and yeah. grainy, which I think is of, of appeal to people online. Yeah, as well. well, I tell you what, I can't wait to see those moments you've decided to take pictures of a, a little later yeah. on. Right. Yeah, do come back because we'll be showing you exactly those pictures that you took. Back to you, JJ. Thank you very much, Io, and I believe you now um, that you're not in your local dry cleaners. I'm looking forward to seeing those pictures developed later. Uh, time now for target practice, and the clock is ticking if anybody wants to collect this season's trophy. Let's see who's taking the map on next. Here's Ian Irving. Rico Lewis, Nathan Aki, welcome to the weekend. We're going to play target practice today. First of all, how's your geography? Not great. No? No, no, no. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not, not, great. not strongest, but... You're not feeling me with confidence. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see as we go along. OK, yeah. let's explain the rules then. Basically, I'm going to ask you eight questions, and it's your job to get the questions correct and place your counter, this little red counter, there you go, Rico, on the board in the square where you think the correct answer lies. If you get it right in the square correctly, that's 100 points. One away is 50 points. Two away is 25 points. Three away is no point, but be careful. Four away, and you start getting minus points. Your teammate, Rodri, got 525 points. He's second overall. Confident? <laughs> we'll try. Uh, Seems a bit I'm, nervous. It, it, no, he's coming across as You just finished school, yeah. so it's still fresh in your head, you know? Yeah, but I didn't take geography. Ah, OK, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. OK, let's get into it then. So, question one. We've seen pictures of you both looking very happy on Instagram, holding the Club World Cup, which you won <laughs> earlier on this season. Where did you win it? So, Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. OK. Yeah. You want to go this one? A little bit left, I think. You think, yeah? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I like that. Yeah? You leave it there? I'm going to have to push you, leaving it there. It's K-18. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. K-18. Rico, you became City's youngest ever Champions League scorer when you scored against Sevilla. Yeah. Do you know who the oldest City player ever to score in the Champions League is? No. Fernandinho. Yeah. All right. Where's he from? Maybe here. You're leaving it there? I think M10. OK. A bit further south, the correct answer is 010. Okay. Oh, take it, we'll so take two it, away. Right. That's not too bad. That's so better that? than the last one. Yeah. Nathan, you represent the Netherlands. Do you know who the highest Dutch scorer in Premier League history is? In Premier League history? Van yeah. Persie? Robin Van Persie, yeah. that's oh, correct. That's Good top. start. <laughs> he played for one club that wasn't in the Netherlands or England. Oh, Turkey. Benabachi. I think, I think maybe yeah. around here. Oh. In the middle of the middle? Oh, a bit up. I'll, I'll higher be or lower? I'll be kind. A bit higher. You're correct. This one? Bang on? Yeah. You see? I'm being kind. <laughs> Next question. Three Manchester City managers have won the Premier League title. Two of them are from Europe, Roberto Mancini and, of course, Pep Guardiola. One of them's not. Where's he from? Yeah, Is it cold in here? Is it cold where? Is it cold in here? A bit. No, you're not a bit chilly, no? That's from Chile, eh? <laughs> P9, maybe? Yeah, I think, yeah. P9. Oh, yeah, P9. You're very close. O9 is the correct ah, answer. That's top. That's good. Country, yeah, that's very good. Yeah. 75. No idea how you got the country correct. Yeah. Yeah. Is it yeah. cold in here? Is it cold where? Right, next question for Rico. Who's the tallest player in the current City squad? I think it's her. So Norway. Where was he born? 
He was born in England, huh? Don't be. Yeah, yeah. He was born in England. Yeah. Leeds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Very sharp. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, I was going to Norway. Very good. I was going to Norway. Two seven five. Going well now. Come on, come on. The word rico in Spanish translates to rich in English. Mm. According to Forbes magazine, the world's richest person is Bernal Arnault, who's the owner of Louis Vuitton. Okay. Where was he born? On the map. Well, yeah. it's all Holland is here. So <laughs> I'm glad you know where Holland is. Yeah. <laughs> That's Spain. Yeah, so, so France. So, so around, yeah. But it's the, yeah, but uh, it can be bigger. So, uh, I yeah, think yeah. it's here. I think yeah, 15. Yeah, yeah. yeah. H15. That's correct. There we go. The Netherlands have come close to winning the World Cup on several occasions, finishing runners-up on three tournaments. Which city did the country last fall at the final hurdle? Uh, 2010, no? Correct. And that was in uh, South, South Africa. Africa? Correct. And that was in uh, probably Johannesburg? Or... Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Where do you think it is? Uh, uh, I think it's more higher. So you're settling on N16? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The correct answer is 017. Ah, one away. One away. You appeared showcasing your skill on the piano last season. So the song that you played, Nuvole Bianchi, do you know the composer? Yeah, I know. That's correct. Italy. Where's he from? Italy. Go ahead. What, what part of Italy do you think? But he could be. He I did, think he's from uh, from be, around Milan and stuff. Right, so that's oh, then northern that's Italy then. Yeah, what? but it could be on that little bit on the left. Uh, Maybe. It's good luck. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it could be You're right. Gonna leave it there. Yeah, but don't be saying it's there. <sighs> yeah, it must be. Correct. <laughs> well done, you two. Very that's good. It. That's top from you. Right, so that means you're level with Rodri. Thank you for playing target practice. You go away with regret, but thank you for taking part. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, it's fine. We're up there, though. Yeah, up there, we're just there, second there. for the season. Yeah, 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 oh, okay. That's fine, then. Yeah, that's fine. fine. Brilliant. Thank you, boys. Nice. Thank you. Well done. Thank you, Rodri. Oh, that was good. good. It was very good. That's good. good. Tied good. Good. with Rodri. I think anything over 180 is a great score. <laughs> 525. Yeah, 525 is really good. Brilliant. Anyone beat a schlup? No. no. We said that. We actually said that each week, didn't we? Or Dan Byrne said it, didn't we? When he did it, like, right at the start. Well, and then the Jeffrey yeah. Schlup did it. But I'm adamant no one is beating Jeffrey Schlup. By the way, before we go anywhere, how about Ian Irving giving him the answers? The chilly one, yeah. Ian, hey. got a bone to pick hey. with you We're because not over here. yeah, that is a VAR check. Yeah. offside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Oracle time. Oracle. Yeah. Men's Men save is back. Ooh, let me feel it. What's it telling me? It's telling me Arsenal going to drop points to tomorrow to, against Warmer. Yeah. Oh, you said that was going to be shaky early on. Yeah. Didn't you? Arsenal going to drop points. That's what it's telling me. That's what I don't know. Okay. That's what it's telling me. Okay. The ball is telling me... One prediction, Liv. ...that Luton are going to beat Everton in the Friday night football and move out of the relegation zone. Wow. Is that a prediction or is that what you want to happen? Both. The ball's telling me it, so it's not, you know, <laughs> can't argue with the ball. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling love. I'm feeling love. I'm getting strong vibrations of love. I think Mo Salah and Jurgen Klopp are going to have a public hug. Oh, they need to, don't they? Oh, right. That's sweet. Is that, again, is that what you want to have? Yeah. Uh, I don't oh. know, but maybe both. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, time now to find out how well Premier League footballers know their hairstyles. That would be... Him again. Oh, I was thinking it was going to be more spaghetti-ish. No, you kill me for that. He doesn't have a cracking bar on him. I'm going to show you the top of a haircut. OK. And you're going to have to tell me which Premier League footballer it belongs to. I'm ready for that. Uh, I can't tell who that is. I don't know. I think it's kind of giving Scandinavian. I don't know. Delica. That's Grealish. Grealish. Check. No. Premier League legend. Famous for his hair. Beckham. David Beckham? Beckham. Let's go up his back. Uh, Beckham. 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 Yes. <laughs> Actually, 
David Beckham. Oh, 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 exactly the same. Nah, shit know this. Oh, come on. Um, That's Jack Grealish, for sure. Um, I'll say Grealish. That's Grealish. This is Grealish. Nice Grealish. Jack Grealish. 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 Jack, no. Um, what's his name again? Um, oh, what's he called from Liverpool? Oh, uh, Mika Richard. The youth. What does he say? I don't know. I'll give you a clue. I'll tell Why you. always me? Pogba no Balotelli. 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 Yes. Oh. Oh my days. Do you think I could? Carry off that Got Balotelli that haircut. Yeah, maybe. A, bit of, a bit of fake hair here. Yeah. You could do it. A bit I don't of know fake you... hair. Fake I hair. mean, if I had real hair. <laughs> no, 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 that's not gonna happen. No, 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 no. No. Chill, chill, chill. What do you mean it's not gonna <laughs> happen? I used to have hair. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. Right. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Uh, if you enjoyed that, you can see the entire feature in its full entirety on the Premier League's YouTube channel. Yes, right. Now, time for my least favourite part of the show. It's fantasy Patrick. <laughs> so let's have a look first of all at the leaderboard because it's bad reading for myself. Um, oh. I am bottom, Io is next. Look how close it was last week between you two, just four points in it. Should we have a look how it played yes. out? Yeah, oh, let's, let's have a look how it lie. played out. I don't I think thought I got week. you with... Um... Oh. Oh. One point! Oh. One point in it, but Jay, you're still leading, so oh. come on. I obviously have Bill <sighs> Foden, who obviously didn't play, yeah. so... Oh. What have I done? I've picked him again yeah, for this yeah, week yeah. because yeah. he was ill, wasn't he? So Pep Guardiola will probably start him. I've gone Phil Foden. I've also gone Manuel Akanji. Wolves at home, I think that's a pretty good fixture. And I've got Leandro Trossard. Don't know whether he's going to start, but I thought Bournemouth home is a good fixture. Let's go from fourth to third. Should we go to Io and find out Io's picks? Io, who have you gone for this week? Talk to me, bro. I mean, there's not much glory left in this <laughs> competition right now. But anyway, let me just go for it. So I went for Martinelli. I, I, if he starts or not, I don't know. But I actually think he'll get a game um, against Bournemouth. And then I've gone for Mateta. Obviously, Crystal Palace take on Manchester United. I think Palace could actually have United on a Monday night at Selhurst Park. Definitely get him in there. And also the Bravka. It's a, it's a tricky one because um, they're away. Newcastle are away to, to Burnley. But I think Newcastle might just have that one. So fingers crossed. All I need to know now is JJ. I know it's just a point, bro. Just just, just pull it out the back, please. Yeah. There is no way anyone wants to be doing comedy, bro. No way. I, Come on. I am Use so... your old school mentality. I've never been more in agreement with yeah. Io ever, I Jay. You believe. need you guys, to win you guys this. Are gonna, you guys are doing... They're supporting me. I know. I can't yeah. feel like I'm the like enemy here, Big man. Time. But they're not supporting me. They're just trying to stave <laughs> yeah. off their own yeah. insecurities. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Men... So I went with... Um, I, I didn't know who I had, so I had Silver still. Then with Bernardo... Ooh. Uh, Guardiola and I went with Rice. The only the thing I'm scared of comes when you pick two players from one team. Yeah. If they don't go right. Yeah. But Silver and Rice, I'm ready, bro. How at this stage Guardiola... of the season have you still got these bro, players it's left? It's a marathon. Guardiola okay. got 15 okay. points last week. Okay. So hopefully, blanks this week. <laughs> uh, my, my picks. I mean, I'm running Come on, out. Jay. Of, I'm running out. Of, so I've gone for Nathan Aki at Spectre. Manchester City's keeper clean sheet. Uh, Trossard, I can't believe I still have him. Yeah, yeah. And he seems to be playing more minutes as yeah. the season's gone on. And uh, Calvert. Lewin, who seems to be in a bit of a rich vein of form. And Luton, maybe. Tonight, though, know. it's a Friday night game. Oh, well, I don't you know. know. Come on, Jay. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm backing you the whole way. OK. Uh, still to come on Welcome to the Weekend. You're known for your running, so I feel like I'll... I'll... I'm not really fast. But... Yeah, but I feel like compared to me, you probably would be. So... Oh, I'd like to think I'd be in yeah. <laughs> Yes, guys, welcome back. Let's go through the fixtures again. So we've got Friday today, Luton versus Everton. Liv thinks Luton are going to win, but no way. I think, like, Luton or like, Derek Chisora, they're going to go down swinging, but they're still going down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Arsenal are going to lose points. They're, moving, they're going to be shaky at home to Bournemouth, I'm telling you. Then we've got Man City Wolves. They're just going to take the lead. And now I'm going Liverpool, Tottenham. Both teams, the, the, it's caving in for them, they're isn't done, it? Yeah. yeah, they're done, yeah. And then Cole Palmer versus Jared Bowen FC. Yeah. I'm going Cole Palmer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. yeah Cole Palmer. Uh, right, Conor Gallagher also played a blinder when he scored Chelsea's goal against Aston Villa last weekend. He also carried that into last night's game too. He had a huge banner at Stamford Bridge. But could he carry that into our tumbling tower too? 
Over to me to find out. to the weekend. How excited are you? I'm really looking forward to it, to be fair. <laughs> we're going to make rules, because I've played this before and I said you weren't allowed to touch any, but then I touched one that couldn't move, so we're, we're making the rules that you can have a little feel around. You can, yeah. Yeah, you can, to see if they can move. And also, yeah, yeah. some of the blocks will have questions on. Cool. So, do you want to go first, or shall I? I'll let you go first. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> right. Can't you go for a side one? Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to go for... Oh, what, is that Rogue? Is that Rogue? Going for a side I, one? I think it is. It's because already it's like... OK, Connor, your first question is, what is your ideal three-course meal? Whoa. That's a tough question. Um... <clears throat> Come on, Connor, we haven't got all day. Start, starter. <laughs> <laughs> starter, I'll just have your basic... Garlic bread. Calamari. Oh, oh calamari. calamari. OK, I like calamari. Garlic bread's a good shell. Yeah. Calamari. Main? Main, I'll have... Go. Oh, okay. Drink, I'll have a Coke if oh. I'm, you know. Isn't Coke just like the best drink? Yeah, so nice. The goat. And then the dessert, I'll have a creme brulee, maybe. Oh, or creme brulee, that's, that's rogue. Sticky toffee pudding, one Is of there the a two. question on that? No, oh, thank God. God, <laughs> duh. Wait, there we go. I don't Easy. know why I shall <laughs> OK, no, we need to, we need to, right, need you, need question, to find, you need to find one with a question on. I'll get a question. You've got a question. No, you, no, it's not for me. You've got to do them all. Do I? Yeah. You're not going to make no, me... No, you, you can do this. I... Act, <laughs> act out your favourite goal no, celebration. No, it's yeah. yours. Nah. No, you have to I do that. You can do, that's not a question. No, that's just but, yeah, but this, is, this game is about you, Connor, not me. So you have to act out your, your favourite goal celebration. I'll do this one. Uh, okay, we love, yeah, okay, we fine. That, yeah, we? we do love that. Easy. We do love a bit of coal. <laughs> It's hard to see because it's so big, like, where's the best place to go? <laughs> I find this really, like, difficult and it should be easier to start. Who is the fastest out of you two? Me and <laughs> Do you. we need to have a race? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be... Should we just quickly... <laughs> I thought it was going to be the fastest. You're the, known... I, I would back my... Not against you. Um, yeah. You're known for your running, so I feel like I'll... I'll... Yeah, but I'm not really fast. Right. Yeah, but I feel like, compared to me, you probably would be, so... Oh, I'd like to think I'd beat you in a race. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm actually really quick. I'll help you now. There we go. Nice. Oh, no question. Nothing. Okay, now it's now we're really in trouble, I think. Yeah. Who's got the worst haircut in the squad? Oh, good question. You? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. That's bang out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm trying to think. He's, he's, You've got great hair. He's got, he's got the worst hair. Mark Kukare's got great hair. Yeah. He can't be up there. You've got a quickly answer. Uh, Madrid. Poor, oh, bless him. OK, which past <laughs> or present Premier League player inspired you growing up? Past, present, Frank Lampard. Super Frank. Yeah, Chelsea legend. Easy one. Easy one, right, OK. Ah. Ooh. No question. Wow. There. Where is your favourite place in the world? Oh, out of all the places you've been on holiday, where where is your favourite? Well, me and my girlfriend, we love LA when we go there. <gasps> it's just like just the weather. It's just chilled where where we where we were in LA. But the beach. Yeah, it's a bit of both, isn't it? Yeah. Best of both worlds. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to try and get this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm able to. You can't hold it! No, oh, that is cheating. Oh. I thought you said you knew how to play Jenga. You didn't say that. You can't time. hold the, the blocks just to try and get one out. I think it got to go. It's just got to go. Do you want me to put it? Wait, wait. It's not. It's staying up. Oh, you're jammy. <laughs> Yours. Get in. I don't want to knock it over. Hey! <laughs> He nearly killed me. <laughs> I just fell on your <laughs> <laughs> oh, Congratulations, Connor. Thank you. Um, have you enjoyed it? I really enjoyed it. I'm Thank so you. glad. Thank you so much. Thank and you. good luck to Chelsea for the rest of the season as Thank well. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, it did nearly kill me. Why, why do we send you on all the Chelsea shoots? Don't know.
don't mm. I? Got no idea. Mm. But just want to say, Conor Gallagher, he was great in that. And what a season he's having. Very deserving of his huge banner um, that said Chelsea since birth. Chelsea fans making their feelings known about him. And, you know, he's been one of our players of the season. So I agree. Yeah, very... Very, very, very good. Right, let's head back to Io because he is in a very special place. We were saw he was with Miles, cameraman, and now he is getting those pictures. What's the word? Developed. Developed. He's getting those pictures <laughs> developed. We're excited <laughs> to see them, Io. Her brain's not developed yet. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm a bit slow at the moment, but yeah, we have got these photos developed and look at them. Wow, unbelievable. Um, Miles, very, very quickly, um, a lot of people might be watching this thinking, how did they? How does it go from that little bit of film that you gave to that guy earlier to these incredible images? Yeah, so, uh, well, I've got the results of them here. So basically, that roll of film gets mm. put into a processor which develops the film and turns them into these negatives, mm. um, which I'm sure you might have seen at some point in your life. Um, so these are negatives of the photos you've seen. And then these go into specialist scanners, which are behind us in the lab here. Uh, to turn them into a positive image and then they get saved to a computer as a digital file. Mm. Uh, from there you can do what you want with them. And so what we've done here is we've chosen some of my favourites and yeah. we've, we've printed them out and uh, upscaled them. In fact, there's one just coming off oh, the line that right now. <laughs> Thank and, you, Max. Uh, do you know what? This is quite a nice one. It's a Kobe <laughs> Mania as well. You know, yeah. one of the highlights of United season oh, I know. <laughs> so far. One of my favourite players. Let's go. I mean, yeah, well. talk, talk us through this one though because this is the beauty <laughs> I really want to know because is yeah. that... A picture from that? That is, yeah. So this one, this is a camera, uh, I have, I've got to credit my wife for this, actually. She mm. found it at an antique store we were walking right. around uh, a few months ago. This camera is from 1897. Wow. So it's 127 years old, and I saw it on the shelf in the, in the shop, and I was like, this still looks like it mm. works perfectly. Mm. And it does. So I found some adapters to put some film in it, um, and I take it to games with me. Uh, I particularly like yeah. shooting, you know, older teams with historic uh, stadiums and things like that. So I took it to the United game, and yeah, this is a shot of Old okay. Trafford. It's a little bit blurry. I, I didn't don't know if I got the absolute best out of it on this one, but yeah, that that photo came from a camera that is essentially 127 Feels years like old. A time warp. Yeah. I know you probably shouldn't say this about your images, but is there anyone here that you, you particularly <laughs> like the most that you think really oh, conjures the image? I mean, of what you're obviously, trying to do? I, w I was very lucky for the Burnley game in that mm. I was sat literally exactly where Anthony came and celebrated yeah. so so, that one, so, yeah. so so I think possibly this one I'd mm. say is the most like press worthy if mm. you're going to use that mm. as a term just because you know I mean you can see the emotion in his face it was his first Premier League of the season mm. it really came out and I love I love the celebration photos mm. in terms of a composition I think possibly the one right down the bottom here the black and white one of uh, mm. Alejandro Garnacho is one of my favorites so I just like the the posy strike and the fact that he's in motion and I just think it's framed nicely so one of those two I'd you know say. You, earlier just before we started rolling on camera you were telling me about uh, a beautiful moment where you got a DM from Kobe Maynard. I like. did, yeah. I mean, as a United fan, that must have blown your mind. It was, so I was on holiday with my wife in, in America and uh, we were still jet lagged. It was only a couple of days in. So I kind of naturally woke up about 6 a.m. And as you do, probably for, for better or for yeah. worse, I turned over, looked at my phone, opened Instagram and went into my DMs. And there was just a DM from at Kobe. And I was like, this has to be a joke. This can't be real. And it was him saying like, hey, bro, I love the photos. And he just sent me his number. Wow. So wow. Uh, since then, me and him are messaging. And every time I, I shoot United game, he always wants the photo. I take of him. So that one, yeah, from the game uh, at Burnley on Saturday, yeah. uh, I sent him loads of those. And then from that, uh, Garnacho asked me to send a few photos oh, come to him on as well. Now you're just, just showing like, off. I'm, I'm living the dream, I can't lie. <laughs> Absolutely. Very, very quickly, yeah. one question on Manchester United. We've yes. got about 20 seconds okay. left. But how would you sum up Manchester United's season in a quick sentence? Um, obviously, it's been a disappointment. I think it's been a bit of a transitional year. I think we've been unlucky with the amount of injuries and stuff that we've had. Mm. I mean, I know Ten Hag said that we've had something like 30 different defensive combinations mm. this season, whether that's through illness or injury. Um, it's been disappointing. I think if we win the FA Cup, I think we can come out of the season with a little bit of our dignity still remaining. And I still think give Ten Hag a little bit of time, get some more players and freshen the squad mm. up next year. And at this point next season, I think we can really judge as to where this squad is. Wow, literally just heard it in my ear. That is time. You are very good, Miles. <laughs> You're you. an absolute legend, man. Love Thanks so much you, for man. showing us around your word. This is amazing. Appreciate it. All right, back to you guys Cheers. in the studio. Cheers, man. He's just gone. <laughs> That's, that's, one, that's some great pictures there. Yeah, that's wow. unreal for like a Man United fan to have the players in your DMs asking you for pictures of them that you've shot. Would you ask? Would you ask? Would you ask for for money? No. Yes. yes this I know you're not. This is work. Anyway. <laughs> oh. Silence in my courtroom. Oh, oh my god! I just thought you just had an outfit change. Sir, like, Judge Live Time. Of course, there is a huge game. This is serious now. A huge game at the bottom of the Premier League tonight. It's Luton against already safe Everton at Kenilworth Road. Who is going to go down? Who are going to be the two other teams with Sheffield United to be relegated? You have 30 seconds to argue the two teams you think are going down, OK? OK. Yeah? 
You have 30 seconds. Who's first? JJ, your 30 seconds start now. I think the two teams that are going to go down are going to be Nottingham Forest and Luton. <laughs> um, I think Luton have put up a gallant fight, and so far they've played really entertaining football. They've stuck to their guns by way of their system and style of play. I just think Burnley are going to survive because out of all of those teams, they're the ones that seem to be getting the results more often than not. They're unbeaten in the long run. They just seem to have found a real good way to play and that's for that reason I think they'll survive. Oh, oh. Yo, this judge is excited. Uh, sh silence in my courtroom. Who asked you? OK, now I'm asking you. Uh, who are your two teams to be relegated alongside Sheffield United? Your 30 seconds start now. I agree with you with Luton. They're, they're, they're swinging, but they're going down. Um, I'm, I think Burnley will go down instead of Forest. I think Burnley have got a few more difficult games. They've got Tottenham away, I think. And it's, I think... I just think Forest got enough quality players that I think they'll get through. I want them to go down, don't get it twisted. I want Burnley to stay up, but <laughs> I, I think they've got enough in it. And the last game is Nottingham versus Burnley at, at the city grounds. So I just don't see them, I just don't see Burnley winning there. Oh, you've done it with time to spare. You didn't even give me time to go. Well, actually, we have a witness in this case. So should we hear what the witness has to say? Ayo is our witness. Ayo, what? What have you seen? <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I've seen you smacking that thing. <laughs> you love it. You enjoy your life. Uh, but a real talk, um, Your, your Honour. Um, I, I think it's that they make very compelling arguments. Um, but I think the Burnley one's really the one, really. I think even though Burnley have gone on a, a really good run of recent, the back end of the season for Burnley has actually been really, really good. That game between Burnley and Nottingham Forest, as Mr Mentz has pointed out, could be really, really crucial. And you look at the calibre of player that Nottingham Forest have brought in this season, you sort of feel like Nottingham Forest probably will stay up and Burnley and Luton will be the two teams that go. <laughs> Witness. Thank you, thank you witness. Thank you, witness. I've got appeal. <laughs> thank you, witness. Could you all rise in my courtroom for my verdict, please? Kangaroo court. Uh, all rise. Got to stand up. All rise. Are you joking? All rise. The winner of this case, annoyingly, because of Io's statement, he's backed up the witness. So the witness has got to be. You have to go into that. So Andrew Mensah, you are our winner. Okay. Take him to jail. <laughs> Take By him the way, to jail. I've actually really enjoyed this. Can we do this every week? No. Because no. Judge Liv, I thoroughly enjoyed I'm it. I hope you've enjoyed the show. A huge game at the bottom. Luton against Everton is your Friday night football. So many other big games. Enjoy them. We'll see you next week.